Now in the final topic regarding modes of convergence, we will give some special criteria for reversing the, uh, the chain of implications for some specific cases only. So the first uh, lemma is that if the measure space is uh, has finite measure, the whole uh, space has finite measure, then the first part is that f n converges to f uh, point wise almost everywhere is equivalent to f n converges to f almost uniformly almost uniformly and secondly if f n converges to f in L infinity norm this implies that f n converges to f in the L 1 norm as well. So, of course, uh, this implication we had already seen and uh, when so this lemma says that when the measure space has finite measure then the forward implication also holds and this is precisely for the first part this uh, forward implication is precisely the statement of Egorov's theorem that we have seen Egorov's theorem which was precisely about almost uniform convergence when you have point wise almost everywhere convergence. So, this is this we have already seen. Now, for the second part if f n converges to f in L infinity norm then if you take the L 1 norm of the difference f n minus f then this is nothing but the integral of f n uh, minus x f n minus f d mu and this uh, modulus f n minus f is bounded above. So, this can be bounded above by the constant function f n minus f l infinity d mu. This is because mod f n x minus f x is less than or equal to the l infinity norm. Uh, outside of a null set. So, since the integral does not see the null set, we have this uh, inequality and now we can take this. Uh, so, let me rewrite this d mu is less than or equal to norm of f n l infinity norm of f n minus f d mu. And now this is a constant function over on x. So, you can take this out of the integral. So, this is nothing but f n minus f l infinity norm times the integral over x of the function 1 and this is nothing but the measure of x measure of x and this is finite. And so, this goes to 0 as m goes to infinity. So, in the finite measure space setting we have seen a couple of reverse implications uh, from point wise almost everywhere to uniform almost uniform convergence and L infinity norm to L 1 norm. <coughs> now, the another special criteria is given by such so called monic simple functions. So, these are called uh, step functions in Tao's book. So, a monic simple function simple function is a function of the form f equals uh, alpha times the indicator function of e 
for alpha strictly positive and E a measurable subset in X. So E is a measurable subset in X and now we will consider sequences of monic simple functions. Now for a sequence Fn equals alpha n chi e n of monic simple functions uh, assume that either alpha n converges to 0 as n goes to infinity or there exists a const constant c positive constant c says that alpha n is bounded away from c. So, c is a lower bound for the alpha n's and we also suppose that suppose as well that the measure of these mu e n's is strictly positive for all n greater than or equal to 1. Now, let us give some terminology. So, I will call alpha n height of f n uh, mu e n width of f n and if you take the union of E n for n greater than or equal to some capital N, this is called the nth tail support of f n. So, in analogy with uh, functions defined on the real line, a n alpha n s, these coefficient alpha n s, uh, of course, I forgot to mention that these are all scalars. And so, um, these are heights of the functions f n. The measure of the sets e n are called the widths of f n and the union of e n for n greater than or equal to some capital N is called the nth tail support of f n. So, these are just some terminology that is being used here. So, now we are ready to state our theorem. So, this is the statement of the theorem and the theorem states uh, gives you a characterization of this sequence of monic simple functions to converge to 0 in all these 7 modes of convergence. Uh, in terms of these heights, widths and the uh, behavior of the nth tail supports for these uh, um, sequence of functions. So, <coughs> the first one says that for example, if f n uh, f n converges to 0 uniformly, if and only if the heights alpha n go to 0 as n goes to infinity. Similarly, if uh, um, f n converges to 0 in L infinity norm, if and only if the heights converge to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, now we already see that uh, we have seen that uniform converges, convergence implies L infinity convergence, but here we can revert this arrow and have a uh, if and only if condition when uniform convergence and L infinity converge, uh, L infinity norm convergence are equivalent. So, this is for monic simple functions that satisfy these assumptions that we have stated. Similarly, uh, f n converges to 0 almost uniformly if and only if either now we have two conditions either the height goes to 0 or the measure of the nth tail support goes to 0. So, here we have an either or two conditions. Then we have point wise convergence if and only if either the height goes to 0 or the limb soup 
is the empty set. So note that this lin sup set is nothing but the intersection of all uh, tail supports. So this is precisely n equal to 1 to infinity union n greater than or equal to n e n. So this is the nth tail support. So in terms of nth tail supports, we see that the intersection of all nth tail supports must be empty. And we can similarly state it for point-wise almost everywhere convergence, which says that either the height goes to 0 or the measure of the limb soup is 0. Similarly, if n converges to 0 in measure, if and only if the height, either the height goes to 0 or the width goes to 0. And finally, if n converges to 0 in the L1 norm, if and only if the uh, product of the width and height go to 0 as n goes to infinity. Now this is actually quite easy to see the last one because this is simply the L1 norm of fn for each n. So this one is almost trivial. Uh, I will only do the cases for convergence in measure. So this one and convergence almost uniformly and the rest I will leave as an exercise. So let us see the proof for these two um, cases. So for the third part we have to show that fn converges to 0 almost uniformly if and only if either the height goes to 0 or the uh, measure of the nth tail support goes to 0. So let us start with for the forward implication let us start with epsilon greater than 0 and so because fn goes to 0 almost uniformly uniformly. This means that there exists a, a set E, a measurable set E such that the measure of this set E is less than or equal to epsilon and one can choose an n naught in n such that we have modulus of f n x uh, less than or equal to epsilon for all n greater than or equal to this threshold value n naught and for all x in the complement of this exceptional set E which has measure less than or equal to epsilon. Now we, uh, we can deal with two cases. So the first case is that uh, E n is a subset of E for all n greater than or equal to n naught. So in this case, this means that mod of f n x is equal to 0 for all n uh, greater than or equal to n naught and x in the complement of E because x does not belong to any of the sets E n. And because fn is equal to alpha n, the indicator function of en, this is going to be 0 for all n greater than or equal to n naught. And this means that, so this means that the measure of the union n greater than or equal to capital N E n is less than or equal to the measure of E which is less than or equal to epsilon for all capital N greater than or equal to capital N naught and this means that the measure of the nth tail support goes to 0 as capital N goes to infinity. So in this first case where you have all these E n's inside um, the set E then we have automatically that the measure of the nth tail, nth tail support goes to 0. Now in the second case we have that x 
So, E n intersection E complement is not empty for some n uh, greater than or equal to n naught. So, in this case, this means that for x in E n intersection E complement, we have that uh, the modulus of f n x is equal to the modulus of alpha n and then this is less than or equal to epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n naught because uh, x belongs to E n, f n x is simply equal to alpha n. And uh, uh, so, sorry, so this is not for all n, this is for this particular value of n uh, greater than or equal to n naught. But if epsilon is chosen less than this uh, value c, so such that epsilon is less than c, where c was the lower bound uh, for these alpha n's, then this implies, then this is a contradiction. So, this implies that alpha n must go to 0, because since either alpha n goes to 0 or alpha n is greater than or equal to c for all n. Therefore, either we have the measure of the nth tail support goes to 0 or alpha n goes to 0, the height goes to 0. Now, for the reverse implication, if alpha n goes to 0, so this implies by the first part of our lemma that f n converges to 0 uniformly, uniformly and this implies that f n converges to 0 almost uniformly. Now, if the measure of the tail supports goes to 0 as n goes to infinity, we have to show that. So, this show to show. So, this is the second case, then f n goes to 0 almost uniformly. So, we will use this fact that the measure of the tail support goes to 0. So, given epsilon greater than 0, choose n naught such that the measure of the union n greater than or equal to n E n is less than or equal to epsilon for all capital N greater than or equal to capital N naught. So, now if we set E to be n greater than or equal to n naught E n, then for all uh, capital N greater than or equal to n naught and x in E complement, we have that the modulus of f n x equals f capital N x equals 0, uh, because f n does not belong to any of the sets uh, E n. Uh, x sorry x does not belong to any of the sets uh, E n for n greater than or equal to n naught. So, this uh, f n x must be 0 and this implies that uh, we have found that f n converges to 0 almost uniformly. So, now we are left with the fifth part which is to show that f n converges to 0 in measure if and only if either alpha n goes to 0 or the measure of uh, the width 
goes to 0. So, either the height goes to 0 or width goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Let me start with the reverse implication. Now, note that alpha n goes to 0 implies uh, f n goes to 0 uh, uniformly uniformly or even almost uniformly as we have seen and this implies f n goes to 0 in measure. So, suppose that rather that the width goes to 0 as n goes to infinity and uh, in this case we have that if we set f n epsilon. So, given epsilon greater than 0, if we set f n epsilon to be the set of points such that the modulus of f n x greater than or equal to epsilon. So, then uh, because f n f n can either be 0 either 0 or a n this implies that since f n x is greater than or equal to epsilon and this is greater than 0, this implies that x belongs to E n. So, this implies that f n epsilon is a subset of E n and so the measure of f n epsilon is less than or equal to the measure of E n. So, by the squeeze theorem, squeeze theorem, this means that the measure of f n epsilon also goes to 0 as n goes to infinity because this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. And of course, these are all positive. So, so we get that the measures of f n epsilon goes to 0 as n goes to infinity and this is precisely the condition for f n going to 0 in measure. So, this proves the reverse implication. Now, for the forward implication, let f n converge to 0 in measure. So, let again f n epsilon be the set of points such that f n x is greater than or equal to epsilon. Now, choose n naught such that the measure of f n epsilon is less than or equal to epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n naught. So, this is a condition for convergence in measure. Now, if again we are going to separate in two cases. So, if uh, a n is less than epsilon for some uh, n greater than or equal to n naught. Uh, choosing epsilon less than c implies that a n converges to 0. So, a n the other cases. So, this is case 1. This, so, the other case is that a n is greater than or equal to epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n naught, which means that the set f and epsilon is precisely E n because uh, this is positive and the set of points where f n is positive is precisely uh, E n. So, this implies that the measure of E n is equal to the measure of f n epsilon and it is less than or equal to epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n naught which means that the measures of these e n's the width goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, we see that in in the case of simple monic functions um, there are some reverse implications that we can state. Now, as an exercise as an exercise uh, consider the escape escapes to in infinity example escapes to infinity 
example and the typewriter sequence typewriter sequence uh, in the light of this theorem in the light of the above theorem. So, you will see immediately which one converges to 0 in which mode by using the above theorem and of course, one has to also show the other parts of the theorem which I leave, uh, left to you as an exercise. So, this brings us to the end of the topic for modes of convergence.